Okay, today we are looking at Pingai OS 11.10. Now, this is the beta version, as Pingai has announced on his site that he doesn't really feel that it is uh, stable enough or at a stage that he's entirely 100% happy with it. So he's going to stick with it as a beta, uh, at least for this release cycle. Nevertheless, I'm going to have a quick look at it, and I'm also going to do a bit of an experiment here with uh, with the screen resolution, because I do have a new laptop now, which uh, I will be doing a review of at some stage in the future, but the screen is a full high definition screen. Now the problem with that potentially for you guys is that if I have a full HD screen the resolution might be too small for you to actually see what's going on in the video unless you pump it up full screen which is going to cost you guys a fair bit of bandwidth. So I've dropped the resolution back to uh, 1360 by 768 and uh, so just let me know what you think. I'm going to do half of the review with 1360 by 768 and then I'm going to do the other half in full high, high definition and you guys can let me know which one you prefer. Uh, so basically, Ping iOS is GNOME 3.2, GNOME Shell. Uh, however, they do, they have made some tweaks here just to change it to the way that Pingai users are used to. Now, the one thing that I think is the most significant uh, thing for this Pingai OS release is the menu. The menu up here in the corner, we don't have the hotspot up in the corner there, so you don't get GNOME Shell by putting your mouse cursor up into the top left-hand corner. You do get this menu. Uh, now, some people say that this looks a bit like the Mint menu. In fact, I think it's actually the, uh, the GNO menu or the GNO. I'm not, not exactly sure how you say it. But basically, Basically, we do have inline search here, so the uh, so your your internet and your any recent documents with the search tag are going to appear here, which is pretty nice. Um, and then uh, you've got your different categorized menus down the side here, so it's much like the Mint, Mint menu, except it's here in GNOME 3, uh, unlike the Mint menu at this stage. So um, that's that's a pretty nice tweak. It's much more traditional in its approach. Now the other thing that I have noticed is that uh, Ping iOS by default comes with a global menu. So it's not like a global menu how you would expect to have all the menu items running along the top of the panel. It is uh, it, it's a global menu that just runs and expands as you need it to uh, down through the menus based on the uh, based on the window icon that you click up in the top left here. Um, now uh, this I'm a, a bit mixed opinions. You do have to click a fair uh, you do have to click a fair few times to get to what you want. Having said that, it is quite smooth and it looks quite nice. It's probably something you could get used to, and you do have the cursor navigation, so you can you uh, do it with your keyboard as well, which is uh, which is fine really. But um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm a bit I'm a bit mixed opinions about that. Uh, now as far as the actual gnome shell itself is concerned, you can of course access so it's simply by hitting the Windows Meta key, and that takes care of any uh, that takes care of all your GNOME shell needs. Uh, so of course we'll just have a quick look under applications here, and uh, and again this is the traditional way that you are going to be uh, accessing your applications if you want to do it the typical GNOME shell style. And uh, you can see we get quite a few apps here. We've got Shutter for your screen uh, for your screenshots. We've got Documents there, GNOME Docs, and we've got XPad for your note taking. Now of course you would have noticed that there is Docky here as well. That uh, that is much more. Yeah, it's traditional. It's Ping iOS has been doing that for quite some time now. Um, now, as far as games are concerned, you just get Play on Linux and the DGL ga DJL Game Manager, which is fine. Of course, Play on Linux being the wrapper for Wine that makes it very easy to install Windows software. Graphics, we've got quite a few here. We've got Disk Wrapper, we've got GIMP, and we've got the other stuff that you can read for yourself. Rapid Photo Downloader is a nice one that I'll probably be doing an app review of it at some stage because it is quite nice. Uh, internet, we've got most of this stuff is uh, is fairly usual stuff that you're going to be using on an everyday basis. Skype, Dropbox, uh, Qubit Torrent doesn't come by default, but that's just my favorite torrent client, so that's what it's there for. Deluge is what comes by default, not a bad client at all. TeamViewer does come pre-installed by default, which is quite a difficult one to get going on your own. It is running through Wine, but it's quite a nice VNC server. Uh, Thunderbird for your mail and XChat IRC. Uh, now, of course, Firefox does come with a few web extensions as well. Uh, uh, that Yeah, they can boost uh, productivity quite a bit. One thing I did notice, though, is after an update, all of those... Uh, all of those extensions got knocked off. So uh, that's probably something you're going to want to be careful of. Uh, now under Office, we've got LibreOffice, of course. We've got WX Banker, which is a obviously a uh, finance managing utility, which is quite handy. And there, then we also have the ebook reader, which is Calibra. Uh, again, another, another nice uh, ebook reader manager that we've most of us would have seen before. But uh, as you can see, you can just use it to uh, synchronize with your different uh, devices, and it can communicate quite effectively with a number of ebook readers that it has listed here. And here we are, and as you can see, it's a big interface, lots of big 
bold colorful icons and it looks like it's a fair bit of fun to muck around with. Under other we do have quite a bit here. We've got flash which of course comes uh, usually comes standard and cover globus which is a nice tweak to handle all of your fun uh, album artwork cover on your desktop in a little widget which is nice. Got all the standard GNOME stuff there, and we've also got a LightScribe uh, read uh, a LightScribe app there as well. So if you've got a LightScribe drive, you can use that to uh, to burn those images onto your DVDs from the top. And then under sound and video, we have OpenShot for your video editing, Clementine, Music Player, Cheese, and all the other fun stuff that you've come to know and love from Pingai, including Handbrake and XBMC Media Center. All fun stuff. GTK Pods there as well. Really, as I've said before with Pingai, it really covers all your possible needs that you could have or want out of the box so it's a very nice distribution to just throw into your uh, throw into your laptop and install it or throw into your desktop and install it and you're going to have most of the apps you're ever going to use there ready uh, that that of course includes codecs and all of that stuff that uh, that is pretty easy to install otherwise nowadays anyway uh, we do have quite a few different tweaking tools here we've got the GW package installer for all your double clicking of your dot debs we've got Illyrius for your gnome tweaking we've got Ubuntu tweak which is the GTK3 version so it is quite a nice application and it does adhere to many of the GNOME 3 standards. For some reason it does not want to launch for me so I'll just continue on. We also have YPPA Manager which uh, which I believe comes from Web Update. Uh, they have a PPA manager now where you can list. Uh, where you, it's basically just a more convenient way and a more user-friendly way to manage those PPAs that, uh, that most of us have by standard on our systems. Here is Ubuntu Tweak. It's finally decided to launch and you can see that uh, it's, it's much more simplified than the previous generation of Ubuntu Tweak. You still have your janitor capabilities there, admins, tweaks, and overview. Uh, so yeah, it's a nice it's a nice tweaking tool. And of course, we do have uh, GNOME Tweak, which is the standard GNOME tweaker that we've all seen before as well for GNOME 3. Of course, Wine is pre-installed as well, so your window applications should play nice. Performance-wise, of course, it's pretty slick. Uh, GNOME 3 is is fairly speedy. Ubuntu 11.10, I have no complaints with either on the performance side. Uh, hardware detection was fantastic, especially considering this new laptop, which I will be talking at length in a future video. But uh, hardware detection was fantastic. I've got all of my wireless, all of the graphics drivers, everything working just dandy. Uh, webcam and all of that fun stuff also works. So, I mean, uh, really, uh, hardware detection, at least for me, is becoming much of the muchness. Uh, most distributions seem to get it right at this stage as of about yeah beginning of uh, 2011. As far as the actual user interface is concerned, I actually don't mind this at all. I was quite used to the Ping iOS way of doing things, and so uh, and so it's nice to see that it's not that big of a departure from the uh, from the traditional uh, user interface. You still have a nice uh, you still have a nice menu here, which will look very familiar to anybody who has used. Uh, any sort of GNOME 2 distribution. It's very similar to the Windows 7 menu even. So uh, I don't think users are going to have a, uh, are going to have a difficult time adjusting here. We've also got a number of nice, uh, GNOME shell extensions running across the top here, including an uber huge system monitor. And we've got the, uh, mount manager. We've We've got G-Pace, which is your clipboard manager, volume and microphone for your uh, sound settings. We've got Bluetooth there, uh, and you've got your network connections, you've got your battery, you've got your calendar, which of course ties in with Evolution if you have it installed, and then your user menu. Um, so honestly, there's not really that much to speak of here. It's it, Again, as far as stability is concerned, I have had a few GNOME shell crashes, and I think that's why it's going to be staying in a permanent beta, at least uh, at this stage. Um, we've got Mint Update Manager, which manages uh, your updates for all uh, for your system. So I'm just going to jump into Full HD now, and you guys can let me know which one you think is better. And here we are in full high definition, and as you can see, now the other thing I haven't mentioned yet is Conky. Now you do get a nice little Conky utility here by default as well, um, which uh, did show up at the beginning of the video, but GNOME shall crash, so I had to restart it again. But uh, just let me know what you guys think. Is this resolution too high for you guys to be able to see any detail without going full screen? Uh, so let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, now of course, uh, Ping iOS does come with a large number of repositories enabled, a lot of PPA here by default and I've disabled a lot of them uh, but basically this is just to keep all of those unique applications and tweaks up to date and usually this is a good thing but sometimes it can wreak havoc uh, so I've disabled most of them just because I don't use them but uh, otherwise they're, it's quite a nice uh, they're quite nice tweaks and that's really what Ping iOS is, is famous for it's a very complete out-of-the-box operating system and it works quite well so let me know what you guys think down below as far as uh, usability of this distribution is concerned and, uh, and also what you think about the full high definition screen. 
Do you prefer something that is tweaked to the nth degree or do you like your bare bones distribution and build it yourself? Once again, everybody have a fantastic holiday season. I will see you back uh, either before the new year or shortly thereafter. I will be away for the first week of the new year. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and definitely consider subscribing if you like this kind of content. Also feel free to check out my blog infinitelygalactic.blogspot.com or you can give me a poke on Twitter at ingalactic. I may or may not get an Ingalactic's opinion up before the end of the year, so if I don't, I shall see you in 2012, and if not, I will see you in the very next episode of Ingalactic's Opinion. Peace out, everybody.